Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we have seen how to compute electrostatic fields due to point charges. We have taken number of point charges. We have applied superposition theorem for determining the electrostatic field at a particular point. And in this video lecture, we will see how to determine electrostatic fields due to a continuous charge distribution. As already been said, the charge distributions can be a line charge, a surface charge, and a volume charge. In this present lecture, we will see how to determine the electric field due to a continuous line charge. Now see the question. Huh? The question is very general question. Determine the electric field intensity at any point P, which is at a distance of H from a straight uniformly charged wire of linear density lambda coulomb per meter. Now, if this is the case, now see the point is at a distance of h from a straight uniformly charged wire. Now, I'll take that this is the wire, a straight uniformly charged wire. Let us suppose the length of the wire is L. The length of the wire is L, and I'll take the point P. So the distance between this point P and the line, I'll take the shortest distance because the distance may vary if you consider. But I'll take the shortest distance and I'll take it as H. And this is a line charge which has lambda coulomb per meter. So if I take 10, 10 meters of length, so it is 10 lambda. If I take 20 meters of length, then it is called as 20 lambda coulomb. So, determine the electric field intensity at any point P, which is at a distance of H from a straight uniformly charged wire. So, this is the question. So, now see the answer. Consider the uniformly charged wire of length L. So, I have considered this one and its length is L. And it is having a linear charge density lambda coulomb per meter. Let the point at which field is to be computed, this is given as P and it is at the shortest distance of H from the wire. Now let the two ends of this wire, this is end A, this is end B. Now these A and B, they will tend some angles. Let the angles be alpha 1 and alpha. So if the length of the wire extends, automatically what will happen? The alpha 1 and alpha 2, they will vary. So what is the minimum value of alpha? The minimum value of alpha will be 0. And the minimum value of alpha 2 will also be same. So on the other hand, what can be the maximum values of alpha 1 and alpha 2? They can be maximum of 90 degrees. Okay. So alpha 1 and alpha 2. And see, now I am considering a small portion. So instead of considering this entire portion of L, I'll consider just only the small portion of the length of the wire. I'll compute the electric fields due to this particular small portion at this point and then I will integrate this small portion over this entire length of the wire. That is what I am going to do now. Okay. So see the thing here, consider a small portion of the wire dx. So this is the small portion of the wire dx which is located at a distance of x from the one end of the wire. So from here to here, I will consider this as x. And uh, this one is particularly making an angle of theta. So I am considering the small length dx which is making an angle of theta. So first of all, I will compute the electric field due to this differential element. And next, I will integrate this over the entire length of the wire. Okay. Now see, the distance from this length to the portion which I am considering here to the point is not going to be h. I will take it as R. Okay. So now I will show you the figure clearly. See here. Now see this is the total line charge. If you carefully see. And this is my point of consideration. And see O and see this is A. These two are the points. The two ends of the wire. And see the angles which are made by these things. Alpha 1 and this is alpha 2. So I am considering now only a small length dx which is at a length of x from the 
one end of the wire from the other end of the wire it is l1 minus x okay, the entire length is l up to this portion it is l1 so from this portion it is l1 minus x and if i consider from here to here it is going to be l minus x okay so for ease of understanding i'll consider this particular triangle this particular triangle so this is p my point of consideration i'll take this one as b this is o this is a this is p and this point is c so i am considering p b c so this is c is a point where i am having uh, my differential length p is my point of observation and b represents the shortest distance on the entire length of wire so this is my entire length of wire this is the shortest distance h this is my differential length and this is making an angle of theta and this is the value of r distance between my considered length to the point of observation and this one i am considering it as l1 minus x okay so in this triangle if you carefully see what is sin theta sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse and what is cos theta it is l1 minus r by sorry l1 minus x by r and what is tan theta it is l1 minus x by h opposite hypotenuse sorry this is not tan theta this is cot theta cot theta is adjacent by hypotenuse sorry adjacent by opposites right so this is not tan theta this is cot theta okay so since the direction of the field is exactly not known first of all if this is the differential length so i will take it as like this okay first of all we will try to compute first of all the vector components and then we will analyze the direction of the electrostatic field okay so now since i am considering only it as a two dimensional thing i will consider only see my wire is in this direction let us suppose in x direction and the point is in this direction most probably i will get a field in this fashion right due to different parts of your wire so i will consider only two dimensions x and y rather than going with x y z so i will consider z as zero wire is lying along x axis and my point of observation is somewhere around on y axis so the generalized expression for electric field intensity for we know that the generalized expression is e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not x long r i'll take it as directly 4 pi epsilon into q by r square into u r right if q is a point charge then we will take it as q if q is not a point charge now if q is a line charge now if q is a line charge what we are supposed to do lambda into dl so the entire length of l i must do the integration right now i am applying this one here so what i will get here 1 by 4 pi epsilon this is instead of q what i am supposed to write integral of lambda for dl by r square this is my electric this is what I am writing here. Now using the above equation now, if you carefully see lambda r of dl, right? You are supposed to do this thing. Now I let me I can write this one as because this is a dot product, okay? So I can take it as uh, two components of the field. They can be because you don't know the component of uh, the direction of E. So I'll take it as two components. One is along the x-axis, the other one is along the y-axis. If I consider it as an x-axis, I will take this vector cos theta. And if I take along the y-axis, I'll consider it as lambda sin theta. Okay. So lambda cos theta into dx. This is lambda sin theta into dx by r square. So this entire thing, I am, what I'm doing is, I am considering this one as 
lambda cos theta into lambda sin theta. So why I am considering this one is I'll show you how. So I'll take this part. Yeah, this is my point of consideration, and I'm considering this is as dx. This is b. This is c, right? So default, what will be the direction of the field? The direction of the field will be like this. So I'm considering. This is my original field. So I'm considering. This is my horizontal component. This is my vertical component. So if this is theta, so this will be e bar cos theta, right? So this will be e bar sine theta. This, so that's what what I have done there in the previous one. If you see, this e component is now divided into two components, e x with e cos theta, e y as e sine theta. The rest of the things remain the same. See in DL, this is differential length, right? My differential length it is varying, you know, in x coordinate system. What is DL? DL is nothing but I'll write down here. DL is equal to dx into i bar plus dy into j. So this particular uh, thing, this is DL, right? So my lambda is only available in this direction only, in the x direction only, as I already taken. So I'll consider only as dx. So that's why I have done only with dx. Carefully see. Okay. So this is my dx instead of entire dl. I have done only dx here, and I have divided into two components: lambda cos theta and lambda sin theta. Now, what is my ex now? If you see, all these things, one by four by epsilon naught, is basically a constant. You know it. Lambda is already given for us. Cos theta we don't know because we do only know one is height h, the other one is lambda. So we must write the equation only in terms of h and lambda, not any other terms. So these terms, theta and r, we are supposed to avoid them. So now let's see what the things which we can avoid. Now, how to avoid this cos theta and r? Earlier we have taken those things in this triangle. We have already done. This is h. This is r. This is l1 minus x, right? So I am supposed to eliminate theta and r, right? So we know that in this equation, what we can write sine theta is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse, and cot theta is adjacent by hypotenuse. I will utilize these two equations. So from this equation, I can use. If you carefully see, from this equation, l1 minus x is equal to h into cot theta. If I differentiate it. I will get differentiate with respect to x. This is constant zero. This is dx. This is h cosecant square theta into d theta, right? So also I do have this expression now. In this expression, what I will do is I'll. So one thing is differentiation I have done. The other one is I have removed r here. I have removed dx term. I am trying to subjectify these terms. Now, if you carefully see, this is what our ex writes. So for dx, what I am writing, I am writing as h cosecant square theta d theta, and for r, what I am writing h by sine theta. So simplify this one. What I will be getting, this entire thing I will get as lambda cos theta into d theta by h. Here I will get lambda sine theta into theta by h. Okay. Now. This theta, if you carefully see, what is this theta? Theta actually will vary. This is the total length of the wire, right? O to A. Theta will vary from alpha one to alpha one. It is not alpha because I must take only in this direction. This is alpha one. This is pi minus alpha. So theta will vary from alpha one to pi minus alpha. So in this integration now, I have got dx and dy. I'll integrate these two equations from theta is equal to alpha one to pi minus alpha for both of these expressions. Now, if you carefully see, this is applying the limits to the angle. So, what I'll get for cos theta, you know the integration it is minus sine theta. So, you substitute that one. 
So what I'll get here lambda by 4 pi epsilon h because both are independent of theta. The only variable term is this one. So minus sin theta this is pi minus alpha 2 to alpha 1. You substitute it you get this value and this is for this one. Okay. So now I have got two terms ex the other one is e1. So my electric field what I will write I will write it as a component E is equal to EX I bar, sorry, EX into I bar plus E Y into J. Assuming uh, Z component is 0. So I will write this entire component here into I bar and I will write E Y component here into J bar. This is my electric field. Now let us suppose we will take two different cases in this one. Case number 1, if the point is in the middle of the wire, if the point is in the middle of the wire, let us suppose exactly here. So what will be alpha 1 and alpha 2? Alpha 1 will be equal to alpha 2, isn't it? So in that case, what is EX component? EX component we have already obtained. It is lambda by 4 pi epsilon h into sin alpha 1 minus sin alpha 2. And what is EY component? It is lambda by 4 pi epsilon h cos alpha 1 plus cos alpha. Right. So if lambda 1 is equal to sorry, alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2, what we will get? We will get a 0 here. So that's why. But whereas this one, you will get 2 cos alpha. So 2, 2 will go here. So we will get lambda by 2 pi epsilon h into cos alpha. So this is for if the point is in the middle of the wire. Let us suppose if the wire is infinitely low. So what will happen? This alpha 1 value, it will move on to alpha 1 tends to 0, right? And alpha 2 also, what will happen? Alpha 2 also tends to 0. So in this case, again, sin 0 minus sin 0, again I will get 0. But here in case, cos 0 is 1 plus cos 0 is 1. So I will get just only this one. So try to remember this formula. We will get again this formula. This is the electric field. So what is E in this case? I component is 0. Z component is already 0, so only Y component we do have and it is right. So this is the expression for electric field intensity at a point P which is at a distance of H from a line charge density of lambda coulomb per meter. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that now you are able to compute the electrostatic field due to different types of charge distributions. Now this is your problem which you are supposed to do. I have done for line charge density. Now you are supposed to do for a circular disk of radius A. Now you are supposed to choose a, a circular charge of radius A. Now this is a surface charge, right? So it will be lambda per coulombs per meter square and you are supposed to determine the electric field at this particular point. Okay, so that is your lecture level problem. I hope you can do it and this is one more problem. You go through the problem carefully and see. This is a finite straight line of charge of length 12 centimeters carrying is uniformly distributed charge of this one. Determine the magnitude and direction of electric field intensity at a point which is allocated at a distance of 3 cm above the wire and displaced 3 cm to the right of beyond 1. So where is the point? The point is at a height of 3 cm and to the right of 3 cm. So let us suppose if this is my wire, 12 cm of wire. Where is my point? It is at a distance of height 3 and it is 3 centimeters to the right of this. So it is somewhere around, it is like this. This is my P. So it is at 3 centimeters and 3 centimeters. So this is alpha 1. This is alpha 2. Sorry, this is alpha 2. Okay. So this is pi minus alpha 2, right? So what is your formula? You know your formula Ex component is lambda 
by 4 pi epsilon h into sin alpha 1 minus sin alpha. Sin alpha 1 minus sin alpha, right? Next, similarly, your y component is lambda by 4 pi epsilon h cos alpha 1 plus cos alpha. So, how to determine alpha 1 and alpha 2? Lambda is given for you, right? This is lambda 0.3 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Don't forget this one. H, this is the height. What is the height? The height is 3 centimeters, right? The height is 3 centimeters, so it will be H is equal to 3 centimeters means 0 0.03 meters. And what is lambda 1 and lambda 2? Sorry, alpha 1 and alpha 2. You consider this big triangle. I will consider this point as D. O, D, R. O, D, R. What is tan alpha 1? Opposite side is 3. By this total, this is 15, right? This is 3. So, 3 by 15 is alpha 1. So, alpha 1 is equal to tan inverse of 3 by 15. If you consider this short triangle, O, sorry, this is ODP. Now, I will consider it as ADP, short triangle. In this short triangle, what is my angle? Tan pi minus, see the angle is not alpha 2, tan pi minus alpha 2. This is tan pi minus alpha 2. It is, height is 3, this is 3. It is 1. So, pi minus alpha 2 is 45 degrees. So, alpha 2 will be 135 degrees. So, this is 135. So, now you have got alpha 1 and alpha 2. So, you can calculate the electric field intensity. Okay. That's it for today. Thank you guys. In the next class, we will see about Gauss law. Thank you.